Good morning. Today we are happy to have Sri Ujwal Jagdish of the Ramana Maharishi Center for Learning. Uh, we'll have a few questions for him on the family immersion model of the Ramana Bala Kendra that was launched last year. And we'll have a few questions that can help parents understand this model, what to expect from the course, and uh, how to proceed in the course. So to get started, uh, Ujwal, can you please say a few words about your experience and what brought you to this Balakendra? Namaste. Uh, hi, I'm currently working as a senior artist and a faculty for dance at Ramana Maharshi Center for Learning. And I'm also the program coordinator at the Ramana Maharshi Center for Learning. And I have done a PG diploma course from RASA on theater arts for holistic development, which they have been using this methodology to teach children and adults with neurodivergence for more than 30 years now. And we have done the, this course, the PG diploma course, which has helped us in various ways and has transformed our lives. Yes, the Bala Kendra actually has been the brainchild of Ramana Maharshi Center for Learning. And it has been there from the inception of Ramana Maharshi Center for Learning in Bangalore from more than 40 plus years. Bala Kendra was started in a way to engage children in theater activities to introduce them to the life and teachings of Bhagwan Sri Ramana Maharshi. So it started with the inception by Srimati Sulochana Rajan, who has composed many songs and has compiled many songs written by Ramana and on him on, in various languages, including English too. And they, they were taught to children and the through the music, we have dance. So the dances for these the songs were also taught by uh, then Dr. Sharda and Dr. Amika Kameshwar. And also they, they were given opportunities to present theater productions based on the life and teachings of Bhagwan Sri Ramana Maharshi. So this actually brought about the holistic development of every child. They were given inputs through music, dance and drama. And when a theater production is done, they are uh, taught leadership qualities. They were taught how to work as a team and how to adjust the mistakes and go on uh, with the performance and various aspects of grooming themselves while wearing costumes and the makeup and uh, uh, handling properties and handling sets, the right time to enter and exit and how to maintain the space, the spatial awareness. All these were imbibed in the children. And I feel this Ramana Balakendra would have been the seed for the development of this methodology called Theatre Arts for Holistic Development, which is which was uh, created by Dr. Ambika Kameshwar later in her life. The next question I have is on the family immersion model. Can you explain a little about how that model differs from your uh, you know, the traditional model that you've had in place for many years? Yes. The, the Bala Kendra was there from 40 plus years and I was introduced to Bala Kendra because I was uh, a part of this Yuva Kendra classes with Dr. Sharda where we were introduced to the life and teachings of Bhagwan Ramana and we were made to teach this to the children, a set of children every Saturday. So that's how the Bala Kendra started. But through the process of understanding the life and teachings of Bhagavan Sri Ramana Maharshi and through our uh, outreach program called the RACE, Ramana Art Form Intervention for Self-Awareness and Excellence. So this project we used to go to, we still go to the underprivileged government schools and other schools nearby and teach them the values through theatre arts for holistic development. But when we were wondering what is the one value that we, it is very, very important to give to all the children when we were meditating on this, the one core value which is inspired by Bhagwan Ramana's life and teaching is to understand that there is this great power within each one of us. And we can call it by any, any name, but it is some divine power which makes us 
which enables us to do all that we do. So to make them understand uh, this great power within and to have faith in that power, to love that power. So was the our basic core value that we wanted to give. And with that intention, we started with a new set uh, of uh, celebrating 40 years of uh, association with the children. We had we were planning to start this restart the Balakendra class because in between the Balakendra was there, but later our focus moved to um, our Indian classical dances and music. So and theater productions. So somehow the engagement with the children had taken a break in that form of Ramana Balakendra. So we revived it, celebrating 40 years of uh, Ramana Balakendra, where we, the ba basic core concept of understanding the divine power within was kept. And uh, since we were all trained in theater arts for holistic development, that format of a lesson plan of theater arts for holistic development, where we have a warm up, and then we have a main session where a main core value is 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 introduced and reiterated, and it is uh, it is understood and uh, uh, assessed. And then we have a closure, which was which was planned according to the lesson plan that we have learned from theatre arts for holistic development. And when we had we were having discussions with Dr. Rama that we she wanted to engage the neurodivergent children also in this Balakendra class. So we thought of having a new batch for ND students, but this would only work with the help of the parents because we were not very sure that, uh, because it's, since it is an online session which is happening now, we were not very sure of how we can engage the ND students. So we came up with this idea of involving the family in this process of learning and experiencing and enjoying and exploring through Ramana Balakendra class. The follow-up question to this is, can you describe one session of the family immersion batch and how that session works and how parents participate in it? Yes. So in the family immersion model that we are having, we start with a warm up and the warm up is the shlokas that we have and we start with a prayer and usually the i encourage the parents to join in the chanting of the shloka with their children because some children are non verbal or some are shy to uh, repeat it so when when the chill the parents are also chanting the shlokas they are encouraged to do it to add to it so we not only chant the shlokas, we also add some movements to the shlokas, uh, explaining the meaning of the shloka with the hand gestures. So this gives an opportunity for children to join in, at least to do a few gestures in between and join in the warm-up session. And the warm-up session brings their attention to the, to the class and to the main session that is going to happen. And in the main session, we usually have these beautiful Ramana rhymes that we have in English, which are very, very simple to understand, which talks about uh, the animals. It talks about the body parts. It talks about various other simple concepts that they anybody would have come across as uh, little children. So, but these concept has a special emphasis on getting back to the divine power. And this getting back to the divine power it has helped not only the children, but also the parents who are uh, with them to understand that there is this divine power within everyone. The same divine power which is there within me is there in each child. And it, it blossoms in different ways and makes them do different things. So it gives a great joy and uh, acceptance through this activity. And we usually have a small a story in the, the main session and we usually conclude the main session with the singing of a song because the song is very very joyous and I have noticed that most of the children who come attend the class they enjoy the music and I have heard from the parents that they sing that in their leisure time they are singing and humming these songs and they also relate to these songs because it's very very melodious and the unknowingly the words are transforming so they all have their impact on them and we conclude 
this session with the singing of a simple chant, Arunachal Shiva. I have not taken many, many verses. We only sing the first two verses in various languages so that they uh, they understand and they imbibe those two verses uh, of uh, Arunachal Akshanamali, the first two verses. And this is how the session happens. I have noticed that sometimes the children, the parents message me saying that uh, today... Uh, my child was not in a mood or he was not able to concentrate or focus or he was getting distracted. But I feel that the, in THD we have learned that every experience, every moment in life is a learning opportunity and it somehow makes us learn something or imbibe something. So maybe a session would have not happened the way that we expected, but there is always an impact of that session. So at least the the... If, if a session, uh, if we have a continuous sessions uh, regularly, then the, the child is somehow accustomed to that regularity. And at one point of time, we also see that they are, they are focused. And sometimes I have noticed that um, although the children are not paying, a, uh, paying any attention, uh, but they, have, they would have imbibed it in their own way. So I feel this is the takeaway from the theater arts or holistic development where we accept every session as it is and we understand that every session makes each one of us grow next question i was thinking about what you said about two things one is that regularity so they i think they're probably seeing a predictable structure that helps them so if you can say a little bit more about how it how the information or content and skills are developed from one class to another. That's my next question. Yes. Uh, well, I understand that uh, the, the neurodivergent uh, children require regularity because they are disturbed by uh, variety and color. So they need to have a regularity. So we have this structure in our Balakendra class, which is based on the uh, THT, where we start with a warm up, and that warm up is a simple uh, repetition of the lines. So we always repeat, and at one point of time, we even give the chance for the the child to continue. So I start the shloka and say continue. So they have they the they are, although we have been doing the same shlokas, we we see that how they progress. Maybe they can uh, repeat one line themselves or they can repeat one full line. Or in this way, we we repeat the same shlokas, but we incrementally start teaching them. Once we repeat one, one word at a time, and maybe next class, if they're ready, we can have one phrase at a time repetition. Or when they are fully ready, we can take them the, tell the one full line. And then they, they at one point of time, they'll be ready to chant their the full shloka independently. The same pattern is used for all the things that we learn, including the rhymes. We learn one line and the, the, the chorus line is repeated after every paragraph. So the, the core message is always uh, imbibed in that the that chorus line, the Pallavi, what we say. So there is this line where in Ramana Tata Sashram, hap, hap, happy, lee. since this is hap, hap, happy, lee is the, the core message that is there in that song so i have uh, seen that the children relate to this and uh, i have seen that they sing whenever they say they i have uh, one of the child uh, repeated when they were reading about some ant and bees in their uh, some other session remembered this ant and bees in the ramana tadas ashram which were very, very happy happy so they were they could move their hands and say happy happily so these uh, we introduce one paragraph after another we first to talk about and everybody tell the talks uh, sings the same line of ants and the next session we add the next animal which is b for bees and in the next session we add the c for cow or c for crow so in this way the the learning is incremental and every class we repeat whatever we've learned in the last class so it gives them the opportunity to repeat and to learn new things so this gives Although it is it is very, very structured and uh, predictable, at the same time, they are learning new aspects. So in uh, 
in in our and in my own journey so i have been would have been chanting this uh, shloka or i've been chanting uh, singing this song or dancing a dance but every time we revisit the song we we have new insights and we have new revelations so this is what happens in the our classes where we reiterate and every time when we revisit it there is new insights and new revelations yes this is the basic pattern that we use in ravana balakirtan yes very sure the hap hap happily certainly made an impact because the, the ones who showed up for the vijay dashmi celebration immediately recognized the animal song and were uh, clapping along and engaging that um, activity so the the next question is you talked about repetition and incremental development and also that some of the children may or may not participate in each session so can you tell a little bit more about how you are supporting parents uh, you know what they can do beyond the class and how you support that process yes parents play a very important role because it's also called family immersion model because the parents play a very important role i always encourage the parents to join the session even if the child is not telling i say let us all clap for amma let us our uh, let amma and the child both sing together so they they are very important to be a part of this experience they are all uh, engaged together and this the experience which they experience in the class time they need to reiterate it because it, the classes happen only once in a week so it becomes a responsibility of the parents to revisit the class to uh, take a portion of it which which the child enjoys and which they also enjoy doing with the child so they can choose that section of the class and reiterate with the children at the right time when the the, the child is in the right mood or when they feel it is uh, doable so they should find that time and they should uh, practice it or do the session once again with the children they can always start with a simple warm up session or simply uh, a simple exercises or simple movement as warm up and have the main session and always have a closure the closure can be as simple as uh, clapping their hands or we have this flower clap which children enjoy or to have a hug at the end of the class and finish the class with a reward to the children and this 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 uh, this makes the children uh, understand and they also imbibe what is being taught in the class and they also will start enjoying the class when we are repeating what we have done um, in the previous class and learning new uh, concepts they will enjoy the class so i and i feel that the the parents should repeat these sessions with their children at the right time uh, in their homes thank you jewel any final thoughts on the family immersion experience before we close this conversation yes okay i personally feel that uh, theater arts which includes music and dance and drama and storytelling and art and crafts it has a very great power to transform our lives and not only it transforms our lives it is enjoyable and it is joyous and it gives opportunities for us to explore and experience the various uh, things so i feel that parents should enroll themselves uh, to any theater activity and you can also join us for ramana balakendra where we are having uh, this this experience uh the the, the cream the, of the experience of theater arts for holistic development here in the ramana balakendra and please in engage yourself and your children in this experience of theater arts which will bring holistic development thank you thank you